You failed to heed my advice. You're telling me if I quit reading now, I'm back to reality. Yes! What do you think all this is if not your own twisted plane of existence? You've created all this to torture yourself. You killed the doomsvents of this world. And now the only thing keeping you here is you. You've become your own doomsvents. Deep, man, deep. Hate to burst your bubble, but I came up with that one myself already. Where do you think I got it? Look around you. Everything here is a product of your own twisted imagination. Your own guilt and regret has trapped you here, made you a prisoner of your own mind. You've had every opportunity to escape, but you keep choosing to press on. Reading these comics is the only thing keeping you here. Then what about that warning I got from DT? A clever ploy by our enemy. You see, there are two factions at war with each other inside your mind. The insecure side, the side that's afraid of reality. I am, naturally, your reasonable side. I am your confidence. I am your future. There is no future in submitting to a rational fear. But I've been at this for months. Where have you been this whole time? Suppressed by your irrational fear. I was shocked into existence by the final manifestation of your costume. You are dangerously close to losing yourself to this world. You're beginning to learn that with the gestation of that suit comes an enormous amount of power. You're beginning to move on from grief to acceptance, and you're being seduced into making this your new home. You're beginning to like it here, and I am here to make sure that that does not happen. I don't believe you. Captain Logan, what other explanation could there possibly be for this place? You have been comatose since December 31st, 2012. And this alleyway only represents a deeper level to that coma. You know, you're very convincing, but I have to finish this. You told me it was insane to keep trying the same thing over and over again. Making the same mistakes is exactly what I'm trying to avoid. If you make it to the final day of spawn year, you will never awaken from this coma. That costume is going to consume you. I guess we'll just have to see how this plays out then. If you insist on trusting this hell over me, at least let me make things more bearable for you. You no longer have any reason to write in your own blood. I am Captain Logan, and this is Day 226 of Spawn Year. I knew this place seemed too good to be true. Once again, Spawn Year is trying to trick me into second-guessing myself. Get me used to this new environment, give me time to develop my strategy and become comfortable with it. And now I even have powers. Yeah, powers! And then it drops Captain Cog on me to rip my mind in two again. To read or not to read, that is the question. But I refuse to dignify this latest development with any more of a response than this. Nothing has changed. The books are still in the trash can every day, the notebook is still here, and Spawn Year is still attempting to make me question my sanity. Send whoever or whatever you want, Spawn Year. I will not lose myself to this new power, Captain Cog. I do not read on because I want to be here, I do it because I want to leave. Spawn returns to Rat City after a year, scouring the globe for minor, mediocre problems to solve, and he runs into his Cogliostro, who tells Spawn the same thing mine told me. You're 
You're letting the power consume you. You can't control it. Stop what you're doing while you still can. The difference between me and Spawn is that despite Captain Cogs implying that I've taken the seat of Doomsvince's throne after destroying him, I'm not wielding the intoxicating power of the Eighth Circle of Hell. I've actually accepted what I have to be in order to find my place in the world again. And most importantly, I'm not on an insane crackpot crusade to play God and remake the whole world in my image. That's right. Spawn went back to the alleys to reveal to Cog that he wants to force the world into a utopia, and everybody's welcome there. Somehow, through his recent insignificant, often baffling and incomprehensible adventures, Spawn has decided that hell itself is creeping in and slowly overtaking the Earth. Oh, that was the point of all those disjointed random episodes. I kind of thought we were just stretching things out for the next big landmark. So that bloated seven-part epic about vampires who think they're God's elite taking over the Earth had something to do with hell seeping into the world? Remember, seven issues is more than 50% of a year. That's seven months you've got your readers thinking about everything but hell creeping into the Earth. And yes, there's all that backdoor manipulation the devil's doing, but that's all in direct retaliation against Spawn for not conforming to Hell's rules and taking the crown of the king he dethroned. This story is called Consequences, and maybe that's the whole point. Spawn is trying to solve a problem he caused in the most simple and obtuse way he can think of, and he doesn't even realize it's all his fault. But then A, he's an idiot because the devil warned him he'd make a move soon in 100, and B, how many times must Spawn learn the same lesson before it finally saves? in. Spawn killed Bulgy, abandoned his Al Simmons persona in history, has all these amazing abilities now, but at the core, he's the same stubborn, ignorant, reactionary wreck he's always been, and that's because the stories dictate these arbitrary status quo changes designed to give the illusion of authentic character growth and maturity. Spawn thinking he can fix the whole universe could be fascinating if it manifested gradually and organically from a progression of events that change Spawn's perceptions, wants, and aspirations. I don't know where this is suddenly coming from. Spawn tells Cog he controls his power. Well, it came from Hell, the place he's afraid will corrupt and control him if he takes Bulgy's seat there. What is the difference? Cog told him an eternity ago that if he killed Malbolge and took his place, he could turn that part of Hell into whatever he wanted and possibly enact positive change on a monumental scale. Now, Spawn wants to try the same thing on Earth in a ridiculous plan to let Hell consume the Earth, then transform it into a paradise. He's claimed Earth as his territory, but clearly it's the Devil's home field advantage. He doesn't operate in Hell. He works right here, traveling the globe, probably lives out of his car or something. Spawn's abandoning a real opportunity to sacrifice his own future. Remember, Cog said once he accepted Bulgy's throne, he wouldn't be able to leave. For a half-baked scheme that probably has no chance at succeeding and is, oh yes, morally reprehensible. If Spawn is going to create an Earth utopia where everyone is both welcome and blissful, happy, contented, after dozens of issues about how violent and selfish and compassionless most people are, take a stab at the one thing Spawn would probably need to rob everyone of to make that happen. You guessed it, free will. He'd have to turn into Jasmine from Season 4 Angel. And what is Spawn terrified of losing by submitting in any way to hell? His self-control, his ability to choose, which at least according to Cog, he'd have as a ruler in hell. But to be fair, Cog's self-motivated by his obsession with getting out of his eternity of wandering the earth so he can't trust him. But essentially, Spawn wants to trade everyone else's right to choose their own destiny for his own. That may sound like an extreme interpretation, but who is Spawn to totally reshape the earth like he's Bastion from the never-ending story? At least that kid put everything back the way it was, and like Spawn, he had the power to make it anything he wanted. So I forget. Is Spawn the protagonist or the villain of this story? Meanwhile, Eddie is back. Yep, that kid who killed his abusive dad after Spawn tattooed him up back in number 29. Wow, we are milking those kids for all they're worth. It was a good issue, yeah, but geez, why can't we let the gems in this coal mine be and stop chipping away at them? Their second appearance already ruined the finality and ambiguity of whether the father or Eddie or Spawn is to blame for what happened there. And now it's even worse. We've gone from getting to decide for ourselves, to Spawn owing the kids and being responsible for them, to Eddie wanting revenge on Spawn here, finding some religious person who works for the real heaven, being handed a gun, 
shooting himself, I guess, and becoming the next Redeemer. The fact that Spawn is still facing consequences for an action he took in issue 29 and still essentially making the same mistakes is really indicative of how directionless and circular this storytelling is. And this is really low, even for heaven. Eddie blames himself for his father's death, having tricked himself into remembering his dad is not all that bad, and he blames Spawn for making him think his dad wanted to kill Andy. And I've read the issue, I'm convinced Andy would have died if Eddie hadn't done something. So Heaven basically twists Eddie's mind and conditions him to think that by killing Spawn, he will have achieved redemption. Thus, he's Redeemer now. Heaven tells a vulnerable kid that vengeance and absolution are the same thing. Holy crap. I'm sorry, Captain Cog. As much as I'd like to quit this mess, I'm pressing on tomorrow. It might seem like I'm turning into Spawn right now, making the same mistakes he is, but I'm just trying to get home. Spawn belongs in hell. Not me. Signed, Captain Logan.